Why not? I wasn't feeling well. Well, you must have been feeling pretty sick to drive. The casting process for the 1986 TV series Matlock brought together a talented group of actors through careful consideration and evaluation. Andy Griffith was a natural choice for the lead role of Ben Matlock, a clever and experienced criminal defense attorney. Griffith's reputation and previous success in television made him an ideal candidate for the part. The producers searched for a talented actress to play Matlock's daughter and assistant, Charlene Matlock. Linda Pearl ultimately secured the role, impressing the casting directors with her audition and demonstrating strong on-screen chemistry with Griffith. Nancy Stafford joined the cast as Michelle Thomas, an assistant district attorney and love interest for Ben Matlock. Stafford's background in law related TV roles and her engaging audition led to her being offered the part. For the role of Cliff Lewis, a young and ambitious lawyer who often collaborates with Matlock, the producers chose Clarence Gilliard Jr. Gilliard's charisma and acting skills shown through during auditions, making him the perfect fit for the role. Throughout the casting process, the producers prioritized finding actors who could bring depth to their characters and create a believable and engaging dynamic. Auditions, chemistry tests, and the actors' overall fit for the roles played crucial parts in the final decisions. The result was a well-rounded and talented cast that brought the Matlock series to life. You hate my singing that much? No, no Billy. I'll take it back. Oh! The directorial vision behind the 1986 TV series Matlock was shaped by veteran director Christopher Lewis. Known for his work in television, Lewis brought a straightforward and engaging style to the show. He focused on creating a traditional legal drama, allowing the characters and their stories to take center stage. Lewis's approach was influenced by classic courtroom dramas with a focus on building suspense and intrigue. He often used close-up shots to capture the emotions of the actors and utilize the courtroom setting to create a sense of tension. Lewis also believed in collaboration, working closely with the cast and crew to ensure a cohesive and engaging final product. To bring the story to life, Lewis worked closely with the show's star, Andy Griffith, who played the lead role of Ben Matlock. Lewis and Griffith developed a strong working relationship, with Griffith's warm and likable persona becoming a defining characteristic of the show. Lewis also collaborated with the writers to ensure that the stories were engaging and that the characters were well developed. In terms of style, Lewis favored a traditional and straightforward approach. He believed in allowing the story to unfold naturally without unnecessary embellishments. This approach helped to create a sense of realism making the courtroom scenes more believable and engaging. Overall, the directorial vision behind Matlock was one of traditional storytelling, with a focus on character development and suspenseful courtroom drama. Through his collaboration with the cast and crew, Lewis was able to bring this vision to life, creating a show that resonated with audiences and endured for many seasons. Seeing here that night, Hillary Clinton could have walked in, I wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> Billy Joe really packed him in. The 1986 TV series Matlock is a classic legal drama that follows the life of Ben Matlock, a clever and experienced criminal defense attorney. Many of us have fond memories of watching this show, and there are sure to be some surprising, funny, and even heartbreaking facts coming up. For those who haven't seen it, Matlock is centered around Ben Matlock, played by Andy Griffith, who uses his wit and knowledge of human nature to solve cases and defend his clients. The show is known for its suspenseful storylines and surprising plot twists. One of the most memorable characters in the series is Ben Matlock himself. His southern charm and clever one-liners make him a fan favorite. But there are many other great roles in the show, from the sly prosecutors to the quirky witnesses. Do you have a favorite character or episode from Matlock? We'd love to hear about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV series. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. So, when was the first time you watched this classic TV series? And which character or storyline stood out to you the most? Whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer to the world of Matlock, there's sure to be something in this series that will leave you shocked, amused, or moved. So stay tuned for some fun and fascinating facts about this beloved show. Damn, he's worked really hard. Oh, I'm sure he's a wonderful guy. 
The production of the 1986 TV series Matlock featured a variety of set designs and locations that added to the show's small town charm. The set for Matlock's law office and home was built in Studio City, Los Angeles, while exterior shots for the law office were filmed in Atlanta, Georgia. The production team faced logistical challenges in filming on location in Atlanta, including coordinating with local authorities and managing crowds of curious onlookers. To ensure smooth filming, the production team worked closely with the Atlanta Film Commission to secure permits and coordinate with local businesses. One innovative technique employed during the production of Matlock was the use of video playback to help actors with their performances. This allowed actors to watch their previous takes and make adjustments to their delivery, improving the overall quality of the final product. The set design for Matlock was meticulously crafted to reflect the character of Ben Matlock, a country lawyer with a down-to-earth personality. The law office set featured warm wood tones and homey touches, such as a fireplace and comfortable seating areas. This design choice helped to create a welcoming atmosphere that reflected Matlock's approachable character. Overall, the production of Matlock required careful planning, coordination, and attention to detail. The use of innovative techniques such as video playback and the meticulous set design helped to create a believable and engaging small town setting for the show. Oh yes, easily. Do you remember it? You bet. It was uh, ESV. Andy Griffith, known for his comedic monologues and films such as The Second Time Around, Onion Head, A Face in the Crowd, and No Time for Sergeants, takes on a more serious role in Matlock. Set in Atlanta, Griffith plays a top-tier lawyer with a homespun demeanor, reminiscent of his Sheriff Andy Taylor character. Despite initial doubts about his abilities, Matlock's success rate in the courtroom quickly dispels any such notions. Throughout the series, Matlock's small-town charm attracts a diverse clientele, including Mafia Dons. His courtroom theatrics and down-to-earth personality contribute to the show's decorum, along with a rotating cast of accomplished actresses such as Bren Thayer, Linda Pearl, Nancy Stafford, and Julie Somers. As the series progresses, some plot holes emerge, and alternate explanations seem unconsidered. However, the show still offers some intriguing plot twists and a heartwarming father-daughter relationship. In Season 8, Episode 11, the show takes a controversial turn when Matlock's daughter, Leanne, engages in premarital sex. The show's stance on the matter suggests that the act itself is not wrong, only the choice of partner may be misguided. This ideological shift marks the end of my viewership, leaving a disappointing impression. Overall, Matlock is a passable hourly watch, particularly for those who appreciate classic legal dramas. However, the show's later seasons may not appeal to all viewers due to its ideological shifts and occasional plot inconsistencies. My name is Billy Lewis and I live in Willow Springs, Georgia. Your Honor, due to the... The creation of a musical score and soundtrack is an essential aspect of filmmaking and the 1986 TV series Matlock is no exception. The music in Matlock complements the narrative and emotional tone of the series, enhancing the audience's experience. The composers and musicians involved in creating the music for Matlock worked diligently to ensure that each piece of music fit seamlessly with the on-screen action. The score, composed by Bruce Babcock, features a variety of musical styles, from blues and jazz to classical and country, depending on the scene's requirements. Babcock's music enhances the show's emotional tone, creating a sense of tension and suspense during courtroom scenes and a lighter, more upbeat mood during Ben Matlock's investigations. The soundtrack also includes popular songs from the 1980s, which helped to establish the series' time period and create a sense of nostalgia for viewers. The musicians who performed the score, including a full orchestra, brought Babcock's compositions to life. The use of live musicians, rather than synthesized music, gives the score a richness and depth that enhances the viewer's emotional connection to the characters and the story. In creating the music for Matlock, Babcock, and the other musicians involved sought to enhance the narrative and emotional tone of the series, making the music an integral part of the show's success. Their contributions have left a lasting impact on the world of television music, creating a soundtrack that resonates with viewers to this day. Harry Slate. Good morning, man. Help you. Yeah, yeah, Harry Slate. Andy Griffith, 
known for his role as Matlock, was also an accomplished musician who played the guitar and banjo on both Matlock and The Andy Griffith Show. Griffith was known for his meticulous involvement with the script of his shows, ensuring every detail was to his liking. It was his chilling performance in the TV movie Fatal Vision that caught the eye of Brandon Tartikoff, who then offered him the lead role in Matlock. Griffith's impact on television has endured, with both shows remaining popular to this day. Thank you, Mr. Matlock. You've been very helpful. Let's go. He's waiting. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1986 TV series Matlock is from the episode The Affair. In this scene, Ben Matlock, played by Andy Griffith, reveals the killer's identity in his unique, captivating style. The director, Harvey Slademan, masterfully builds tension throughout the scene, using close-ups of the suspect's faces and cross-cutting between them and Matlock. The performance by Griffith is exceptional as he delivers his lines with conviction and charisma. He uses subtle body language and facial expressions to convey Matlock's intelligence and confidence, making the audience fully invested in the outcome of the scene. The cinematography by William Kronjaeger is also noteworthy. The use of low-key lighting and shadows adds a sense of mystery and intrigue, while the camera angles create a feeling of intimacy and suspense. The scene is shot in a way that keeps the audience guessing until the very end, when Matlock finally reveals the killer. The scene, and the series as a whole, has had a significant impact on audiences and the legal drama genre. According to Lehman, Matlock was one of the first shows to focus on the defense attorney's perspective, rather than the prosecution. This shift in perspective helped to humanize the legal system and make it more accessible to the general public. Griffith, in an interview, spoke about the appeal of Matlock, stating, People like to see justice done, and they like to see it done in a way that's not too complicated. The simplicity and directness of the show, combined with its high-quality production values, have helped it to endure as a classic of the genre. In conclusion, the iconic scene from Matlock is a masterclass in direction, performance, and cinematography. Its impact on audiences and the legal drama genre is still felt today, and it serves as a testament to the show's enduring appeal and legacy. What were you wearing the night of the murder? In the episode of Matlock titled The Fugitive, the young man on the run is actually Matlock's client, Drew Carey, who flees the courtroom due to feeling defeated in his case, unlike the original story where Dr. Richard Kimball is the one on the run. The character of Conrad McMasters is known for his relationships with women, having dated and worked with many throughout the series. In the episode The Blues Singer, Matlock mistakenly refers to the Smithsonian Institute when the correct name is actually the Smithsonian Institution. File. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I took it yeah. home so I could go over it. Go over it. Yeah, sure, sure. So, uh... The 1986 TV series Matlock, starring Andy Griffith as defense attorney Ben Matlock, left a significant cultural and social impact. The show, with its courtroom drama and clever plot twists, resonated with audiences due to its relatable characters and engaging storylines. Matlock became a popular figure in American television, often using his wit and intelligence to solve complex cases. This portrayal of a brilliant defense attorney contributed to discussions on the legal system and the role of lawyers in society. The series also influenced pop culture, with Ben Matlock's southern charm and distinctive style becoming a part of the cultural lexicon. Matlock's signature seersucker suit and hat became synonymous with the character, making him an enduring symbol of 1980s television. Moreover, the show featured notable guest stars such as Elizabeth Taylor and Andy Griffith's former co-star from The Andy Griffith Show, Ron Howard. These appearances further solidified Matlock's place in television history and added to its cultural significance. Matlock also contributed to discussions on social themes such as the presumption of innocence and the importance of a fair trial. Through its compelling narratives, the series encouraged viewers to consider these issues and reflect on their own value and beliefs. In conclusion, the 1986 TV series Matlock left a lasting cultural and social impact through its engaging storytelling, memorable characters, and thought-provoking themes. The show resonated with audiences, influenced pop culture, and contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural issues.
in some home. I had to lie. In the fourth season of Matlock, a shocking event occurs as a recurring cast member is murdered. Lieutenant Bob Brooks, a close friend of Ben, and his contact on the Atlanta Police Department, is stabbed to death in a revenge plot against Matlock. This event adds a darker element to the series. During filming, Andy Griffith, who played Ben Matlock, faced challenges due to his battle with Guillain-Barre syndrome. He wore knee braces and used notes to help him remember his lines. Despite these obstacles, Griffith was able to deliver complex and lengthy monologues with ease, often nailing them in just one take. His dedication and skill were admired by the crew, who would frequently applaud his performances. Griffith also had a hand in the creative direction of the show. He suggested filming a two-part episode in his hometown of Manteo, NC, for the beginning of the fourth season. This decision added a personal touch to the series and gave viewers a glimpse into the actor's real-life roots. Throughout the series, Matlock is able to identify the true culprit during cross-examinations, often leading to dramatic gotcha moments. These scenes required Griffith to deliver lengthy monologues, showcasing his skill as an actor and his ability to command the audience's attention. But I'm afraid I can't open it for you. Why not? Federal law. Your name's not... The 1986 TV series Matlock, starring Andy Griffith as defense attorney Ben Matlock, received mixed reviews from critics, but was generally well received by audiences. The show was praised for its traditional formula and Griffith's endearing performance, which provided a comforting and entertaining viewing experience. However, some critics criticized the predictable plot lines and formulaic nature of the series. Despite the mixed critical reception, Matlock was a rating success and ran for nine seasons, a testament to its popularity with audiences. Over the course of its run, the show received several award nominations, including multiple Emmy and Golden Globe nominations for Andy Griffith's performance. While the show did not win any major awards, these nominations recognized the quality of the performances and the show's impact on audiences. The nomination and success of Matlock are significant for those involved in the show, as they demonstrate the enduring appeal of traditional television formats and the power of a strong lead performance. The show's success also speaks to the importance of providing entertaining and engaging content that resonates with audiences, even in the face of critical skepticism. Overall, the critical reception and awards of Matlock highlight the show's impact on television history and its place as a beloved classic in the world of TV. Nancy Stafford, who joined the cast in Matlock's second season, had to miss several episodes due to her busy schedule. She eventually left the show in 1992. When the production moved to Wilmington, North Carolina for the seventh season, Andy Griffith suggested that Clarence Gilliard relocate nearby. Gilliard did so for a year before moving to California to co-star in Walker, Texas Ranger. Interestingly, Gilliard worked with one of Griffith's longtime friends, R.G. Armstrong, on an episode of Walker, Texas Ranger. They filmed in Griffith's real-life residence in Roanoke, North Carolina, where Gilliard met Armstrong on a two-part episode. Tell me. Like I said before, Mr. Matlock, look for the... During the filming of Matlock, the 1986 TV series, several interesting anecdotes offer a glimpse into the experiences of the cast and crew. For instance, Andy Griffith, who played the lead role of Ben Matlock, was known for his pranks on set. He would often play jokes on his co-stars, keeping the atmosphere light and fun. The show's creator, Dean Hargrove, was also a significant part of the production. He would often be present on set, offering guidance and suggestions to the actors and crew. Hargrove's dedication to the show was evident in his meticulous attention to detail, ensuring that each scene was shot with precision and care. One of the most memorable moments during the filming of Matlock was when the crew had to shoot a courtroom scene. The set was filled with extras playing the roles of jurors, and the noise level was high. However, when the camera started rolling, everyone on set became completely silent, creating a tense and dramatic atmosphere. The show's director, Harvey Slayman, was known for his innovative approach to filmmaking. He would often use unique camera angles 
and lighting techniques to create a more immersive experience for the audience. Laidman's dedication to his craft was evident in the final product, with each episode of Matlock showcasing his exceptional directing skills. Despite the long hours and hard work, the cast and crew of Matlock always managed to maintain a positive attitude. They would often socialize offset, forming close bonds that lasted long after the show's cancellation. These personal connections added an extra layer of depth to the show, making it a true labor of love for everyone involved. Overall, the making of Matlock was a collaborative effort, with each member of the cast and crew contributing their unique skills and talents to create a compelling and entertaining TV series. From Andy Griffith's pranks to Harvey Zleyman's innovative directing style, the behind-the-scenes anecdotes offer a fascinating look into the experiences of the people who brought Matlock to life. Strip, he said, go ahead, because he just draw another one. What time was that? Uh, was 7.41. Betty Lynn, known for playing Ben's secretary Sarah in Matlock, has an interesting connection to the Andy Griffith show. The name Sarah was also used for the unseen telephone operator in Maybury. The theme song for Matlock was composed by Dick DeBenedictis, adding to the show's unique identity. In a small world scenario, Clarence Gilliard Jr., who worked with Noble William on Walker, Texas Ranger, first met him on the set of Matlock. However, they didn't share a scene together in the same episode. These behind-the-scenes facts add depth to the viewing experience of Matlock. <laughs> His mother used to say that all the time. She'd say, Irwin's cute. The 1986 TV series Matlock, starring Andy Griffith as a clever defense attorney, holds a significant place in television history. The show's success, spanning over nine seasons and 195 episodes, showcased the enduring appeal of courtroom dramas. Matlock's influence on future filmmaking is evident in the abundance of legal dramas that followed, such as Law & Order, Boston Legal, and Suits. These series borrowed elements from Matlock's formula, including the charismatic lead lawyer, intriguing cases, and surprise witnesses. Moreover, the series inspired a generation of actors and filmmakers who grew up watching Griffith's nuanced portrayal of Ben Matlock. Many of them drew inspiration from his ability to captivate audiences and create suspense within the courtroom setting. Subsequent works, such as the popular Netflix series The Lincoln Lawyer, continued to build upon the foundation laid by Matlock. By exploring the complexities of the legal system and the people within it, these shows keep the legacy of Matlock alive and well. In summary, Matlock's lasting legacy lies in its contribution to the courtroom drama genre, its influence on future filmmaking, and the inspiration it has provided to countless actors and filmmakers. I know, but if you'll buy me a big supper, maybe we can talk it over. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Matlock popular 80s TV series aired its first episode on September 23, 1986 on NBC at 800 p.m. EST, 700 p.m. PST, and held its time slot for five consecutive years. The show concluded after nine seasons due to Andy Griffith's desire to spend more time with his family. One notable episode, The Captain, featured a rogue cop, Edward Hanna, seeking revenge for his wife's murder by targeting alley dwellers. In this episode, the killer was revealed in the opening act, making it a unique departure from the show's typical format. Maybe he was boiling water at the time it was shot, maybe to make some tea. Before appearing on the show, Keen Holiday, who played Cliff Lewis, was already familiar with Andy Griffith through watching The Andy Griffith Show. Despite not seeing every episode, he was able to recognize all the characters. Nancy Stafford, who joined Matlock in its second season as Michelle Thomas, was a fan of the Andy Griffith show as a child, and even resembled Don Knotts in The Incredible Mr. Limpet. She went on to play the assistant to Andy Griffith's character, Ben Matlock. Randy Travis also made a guest appearance as Billy Wheeler, a country singer idolized by Ben. Uh, undergoing plastic surgery? No. Have you ever thought about undergoing plastic surgery? No. After an 18-year break from starring in The Andy Griffith Show, Andy Griffith returned to television in 1986 with the series Matlock, taking on the role because he appreciated the script. Despite the belief that Matlock was aimed at an older demographic, Griffith was only 59 when he first played the character of Ben Matlock. 
following the show's conclusion, both Nancy Stafford and Clarence Gilliard Jr. maintained positive relationships with Griffith until his passing in 2012. Throughout his career, Griffith consistently chose roles that resonated with him, showcasing his dedication to his craft and his impact on the television industry. Provide him with incendiary devices that he used to... In the NBC edition of Matlock, Clarence Gilliard Jr. became a constant presence, appearing in almost every episode before production shifted to North Carolina for the seventh season. Gilliard's rising stardom, which led to his role in Walker, Texas Ranger, made scheduling challenging. Billy Zane and Francis Fisher also graced the show with their talents years before their iconic roles in Titanic. Zane was cast as Rose's fiance, while Fisher played her mother. Daniel Roebuck made sporadic appearances on the NBC version, but his significant weight loss between appearances allowed him to take on a new character for ABC. Roebuck's transformation was so drastic that Ben, a fellow character, briefly noticed his resemblance to the chubby man from earlier on. However, Roebuck gained weight, and then some as he aged. Promised my oldest friend, now you're going to take me and show me what happened, because I... In the TV series Matlock, which first aired in 1986, the character of Ben Matlock played a paternal role to Michelle in Conrad. Similarly, actor Andy Griffith, who played Matlock, provided guidance and support to his co-stars Nancy Stafford and Clarence Gilliard Jr. in real life. In one episode, Matlock experiences discomfort when he purchases a pair of shoes from Trader Joe's, only to discover they are the wrong size. He is grateful when Cassie provides him with a new pair that fits perfectly. Additionally, the show features two mobsters with notable names Robert Drake and Jay Cutler in the episode titled The Abduction. Overall, Matlock is a series that combines humor and drama with a cast that formed a close bond both on and off screen. Much real evidence against Alice Blake, I was certain he was guilty. In the first episode of Matlock, titled The Power Brokers Part 1, the main character, Ben Matlock, sang a brief snippet of Peach Pickin' Time in Georgia. Later, in The Hunting Party Part 2, both Matlock and Conrad sang the entire song, following Matlock's trip to Manteo, North Carolina. Two notable actresses left the series during its run. Nancy Stafford, who played Michelle Thomas, chose to depart after season 6 due to her recent marriage, and the show's move to North Carolina. Linda Pearl, who portrayed Ben Matlock's daughter, Charlene, left after the successful first season. Pearl expressed her disappointment that the show focused more on Matlock's caseload than on developing the father-daughter relationship. She also mentioned that her youth and maturity might have contributed to the lack of age gap contrast between father and daughter. Matlock's executive producer, Dean Hargrove, acknowledged Pearl's maturity, stating that she seemed so grown up. Someone who knew Ms. Marvel. In the popular 1980s TV series, Matlock, several actors made guest appearances before joining the main cast. Nancy Stafford, Kari Lizer, Daniel Roebuck, and Bren Thayer all had earlier roles before taking on the characters of Michelle, Cassie, Cliff, and Leanne. Andy Griffith, who played the lead role of Ben Matlock, occasionally had disagreements with producer Dean Hargrove. Griffith wanted his character to explore the darker aspects of law practice, even suggesting that Matlock should have a drinking problem or go to jail. However, Hargrove was hesitant to alter the mystery plots of the series. Linda Pearl, an original cast member, left the show towards the end of the first season due to disputes about her character and relationships with other actors. Her departure was a significant change in the show's dynamic. These behind-the-scenes tensions and changes did not deter the show's success, as Matlock remained a popular series throughout its run. Georgia Air, Flight 183 from New York, you can check the airline on that. Andy Griffith, the star of Matlock, was a favorite of several cast members who had previously worked with him on The Andy Griffith Show. However, during the third season of Matlock, the original bench lawyer, Keen Holiday, was let go due to his struggle with substance abuse. After Holiday's arrest and mandatory rehab, both Griffith and the producers faced uncertainty regarding the consistency of the scripts. 
They had to adapt to the unpredictability of holidays contributions as they were unsure of what they would receive from week to week. The song. Yeah. Hi. In the TV series Matlock, the main character, Ben, only got hit by a car once while deeply preoccupied with a challenging case. Initially, he held a grudge against his nurse, but she quickly won him over by curing his headache and providing the crucial insight he needed to solve the case. Conrad, played by Clarence Gilliard Jr., joined the cast in season four, replacing Keen Holiday as Tyler's investigator. Contrasting with Tyler's aristocratic demeanor, Conrad brought a more down-to-earth, blue-collar attitude to the show, having previously worked as a sheriff's deputy. Interestingly, all three actors who joined the cast later in the series Nancy Stafford, Clarence Gilliard Jr., and Daniel Roebuck were fans of Andy Griffith's work before joining Matlock. Stafford replaced Linda Pearl in season two, while Gilliard and Roebuck joined in seasons four and seven, respectively. Each of them had grown up watching the Andy Griffith show, which undoubtedly influenced their decision to join the Matlock cast. Thanks. I owe you two. Anytime. In the TV series Matlock, which first aired in 1986, there are a few noteworthy instances where the show deviates from its typical format. For example, Andy Griffith, who plays the lead role of Ben Matlock, also portrays his character's father in a couple of flashback episodes. These episodes offer a glimpse into Ben's early career and personal life. Another interesting fact about the series is that most of the episode titles begin with the word Matlock, with a few exceptions. Episodes such as Diary of a Perfect Murder, Santa Claus, Blind Justice, Nowhere to Turn, Mr. Awesome, Matlock's Bad, Bad, Bad Dream, Brennan, and Dead Air are titled differently, breaking the pattern. Lastly, the show's protagonist, Ben Matlock, is known for his calm and collected demeanor, but he can be ruthless when wronged. If someone stabs him in the back, he will not hesitate to show them his ruthless side, turning the tables on his enemies. Many, many people disabled just... Nancy Stafford, a struggling actress, found her mentor in the form of Andy Griffith, who took her under his wing. Stafford, after becoming a fan of Griffith since her girlhood, made her first television appearance alongside him in the series Matlock. She took on the role of Michelle Thomas, Ben Matlock's second attorney's assistant and partner for 74 out of 109 episodes. Ben Matlock's full name is Leighton Matlock, adding another layer to the character's identity. Griffith's mastery of the courtroom speeches was impressive, as he had memorized them, making it seem simple and effortless. He would often deliver his lines without waiting for a reply, sometimes even interrupting someone's answer. This approach made his performance seem natural and spontaneous, leaving a lasting impression on the audience. In the fourth season of Matlock, the character Ben Matlock defends a mentally challenged client named Tommy, who is accused of murder. This storyline was a result of production delays caused by the Writers Guild of America strike in 1988, which forced the team to expand two episodes from the previous season and use Clarence Gilliard Jr. for the first two episodes of the fourth season before his official debut. The Ben Matlock character was inspired by real-life defense attorney Bobby Lee Cook from Somerville, Georgia, and Chattanooga County. In the episode Matlock the Thoroughbred, Matlock faces a unique challenge as he tries to explain the legal process to Tommy, who struggles to understand what is happening due to his limited mental capacity. As the story unfolds, Matlock becomes increasingly frustrated with Tommy's erratic behavior and inability to comprehend the situation. In one scene, Matlock suggests a diminished capacity plea, only to be met with confusion and hysteria from his client. In a moment of exasperation, Matlock exclaims, Oh, Lord. Overall, the fourth season of Matlock featured unique challenges and storylines, all of which were shaped by real-world events and inspired by real-life legal professionals. I mean, he hadn't seen Peter for years. Why would he tell Peter he was dying and not me? I'm just wondering... Matlock's lead lawyer, Ben, charged $100,000 per case, but believed in doing pro bono work for the sake of his soul. His worth was often recognized when he won, with clients considering him a bargain despite his high fees. Before Keen Holiday's departure, 
Cindy Morgan's character worked as a private investigator for Ben, planning to become an equal partner. However, when that didn't work out, Clarence Gilliard Jr. joined the cast. Nancy Stafford, who played Michelle Thomas, mentioned in an interview that filming courtroom scenes could take two to three days, with the entire one-hour show taking eight days to shoot. The cast found it impressive when Andy Griffith, who played Ben, delivered his final wrap-up as a monologue, often receiving a standing ovation from the cast, gallery, and crew. Griffith had a knack for memorizing his lines and delivering them confidently, regardless of what other actors said. Stafford appreciated the positive atmosphere he created on set. Western Chambers, I'd like to show the tape of the mayor's assassination. Andy Griffith, known for his role in The Andy Griffith Show, had reservations about playing the character of Ben Matlock due to the latter's vanity and cheapness. Despite this, Griffith ended up portraying Matlock for a longer period in terms of years, although not in terms of episodes. Specifically, he appeared in 193 episodes as Matlock, compared to the 249 episodes of The Andy Griffith Show. In addition to his acting career, Griffith's on-screen son, Tyler Hudson, played a lieutenant in the U.S. Army. These are just a few details about the 1986 TV series Matlock and its cast. What are you doing? We're not even up to bed. When the character Matlock became a widower, the topic of marriage was sensitive for him. His daughter Charlene revealed limited information about her mother, stating that she lost her mother at a young age during a case where someone was driven to murder because their own mother had been taken away. In 1988, Don Knotts made a recurring guest appearance on Matlock, reuniting with his old friend Andy Griffith after 20 years since their time together on The Andy Griffith Show. Out of the 100 actors who auditioned for the role of Conrad McMasters, it was Griffith who personally selected Clarence Gilliard Jr. for the part. Good voter. My thoughts exactly. Why don't you have a phone book and take a look? Clarence Gilliard Jr. and Daniel Roebuck became series regulars together in Matlock for season 7 and 8, but only appeared in two episodes together due to one or both of them being absent in certain episodes. Ben Matlock. The main character played by Andy Griffith had a love for hot dogs, while Griffith himself preferred apples and peanut butter, even having them on set. During the show's seventh season, when production moved from Los Angeles to North Carolina, Griffith suggested that Gilliard live there, which he did for over a year. Maybe I was to blame. Maybe you should... Andy Griffith portrayed the same character, Ben Matlock in the 1986 series Matlock and its subsequent episodes. In the episode Matlock, the Court Martial, Part 1, Matlock reveals that he repeated the third grade, emphasizing that success is not always easily achieved. Interestingly, both Julie March, a character in the series, and actress Julie Somers, who played Julie March, hail from Nebraska in real life. This small detail adds a layer of authenticity to the characters they portray. Go to Victoria's suite and clean up the mess in here. That's what he calls it. In the fourth season of Matlock, the main character, a skilled defense attorney, encounters a no-nonsense judge who dislikes his unconventional courtroom tactics. This judge, who had previously worked in a different court, later moves to Atlanta and becomes the only judge who consistently refuses to allow Matlock to conduct himself as he usually does. Throughout the show, Matlock wins every case, but there are three exceptions where he initially loses. These losses are later corrected. For instance, Matlock lost a case against Dave Travis, who was convicted for murdering Victor Tomasio. However, Matlock's client, Lester Matthews, was tried for murdering a fellow inmate and was in custody for seven years before being released and found innocent in a second trial. In another case, Matlock lost when he got the other brother to admit to being involved in a murder and subsequently revealed the defendant's involvement. Matlock won the case by catching the killers, albeit in a way that did not break client-lawyer privilege. No beef, no chicken, no fish, just vegetables and... In the final scene of Matlock, Ben Matlock, played by Andy Griffith, takes a bow but accidentally splits the seat of his pants. 
This was Griffith's last appearance as the lead in the series, which he chose to leave in 1995 to spend more time with his family. However, he returned to the role in a two-part episode of Diagnosis Murder in 1997. In season three of Matlock, Don Knotts joined the cast, and there was an inside joke related to the Andy Griffith show. Knotts, who previously played Barney Fife, once again buys a lemon in this series, but this time he is accused of murdering the person who sold it to him. The episode highlights the enduring bond between the two actors in their shared history. Good morning. Oh, hi, Gert. Gertrude. Mm -hmm. How did you... After appearing in Return to Maybury, a reunion movie for The Andy Griffith Show, Andy Griffith took on the role of Ben Matlock in the 1986 series of the same name. Just like his character in the previous show, Matlock drove a Ford automobile, adding a touch of familiarity to the new series. During the filming of Matlock, Griffith took it upon himself to teach his co-star, Clarence Gilliard Jr., how to be funny. This mentorship allowed Gilliard to enhance his comedic skills and contribute to the show's light-hearted tone. The onset lessons not only strengthened their professional bond, but also enriched the overall quality of the series. Cliff. Cliff. Okay, Cliff, and you? Um, I'll just tell what she's doing. The popular 1980s TV series, Matlock, shares similarities with Perry Mason. In a two-part episode of Diagnosis Murder, actor Andy Griffith reprises Matlock role marking his final appearance as the character. This episode reveals that Ben Matlock, in 1969, lost his life savings of 5,000 in the eight-track tape industry, leading to his habit of living frugally. In Matlock, when Linda Pearl was absent, Carrie Lizer's character briefly filled the void left by Ben's daughter, Charlene, who had moved to Philadelphia. However, Andy Griffith opposed this change, and Nancy Stafford was ultimately brought in to replace Pearl. Need it. What are you talking about? You hired Mr. Schneider here to steal. Matlock, a popular 1980s TV series, holds the distinction of featuring four Western or country themed episodes. These episodes, titled Matlock the Country Boy, Matlock the Thoroughbred, Matlock the Nightmare, and Matlock Mr. Awesome, offered a unique perspective within the show's usual legal drama format. Interestingly, lead actor Andy Griffith played a significant role in the development of his co-star, Clarence Gilliard. Off-camera, Griffith taught Gilliard how to be funnier, contributing to the show's comedic elements. Griffith's dedication to his family is also noteworthy. While filming the first six seasons of Matlock for NBC, and even during the seventh season for ABC, Griffith would frequently fly between the set in California and his home in Manteo, North Carolina. This commute allowed him to spend weekends and breaks with his family, demonstrating his commitment to his personal life despite his busy acting schedule. Tell me you love it. Mm. In the TV series Matlock, various intriguing events unfold. One notable instance occurs when a potential witness, initially interviewed by Ben Matlock, changes her story on the stand, claiming she had been tampered with previously. In another episode, the DJ, a shock jock named Arthur Saxon, is accused of murder. Although innocent, his unpleasant behavior in court makes him a defendant the jury is eager to convict. Interestingly, the individual being questioned by Matlock at the end of each case is revealed to be the actual killer, with Matlock having exposed them to prove his client's innocence. My bed last night. What did you say? I said somebody put a rattlesnake, there's dem in the TV series Matlock, which first aired in 1986, the issue of corrupt lawyers is a recurring theme. The main character, Ben Matlock, played by Andy Griffith, remains mostly composed, rarely showing anger. However, in the episode The Foursome, Matlock displays a rare exception to his calm demeanor. When the prosecuting attorney, Lauren Richmond, manipulates evidence to secure a conviction, Matlock exposes her deceit during the appeal. As Richmond pleads for a second chance, Matlock responds with a stern expression and a firm no, I don't think so. Throughout the series, whenever Matlock introduces new evidence, he often refers to it as Defense Exhibit G. This repetition adds a consistent element to the show. Interestingly, Andy Griffith and Ron Howard, who played Opie Taylor on The Andy Griffith Show, have a connection in Matlock. 
Jean Spiegelhoward, Ron Howard's mother, appeared in an episode of Matlock titled The Doctors in 1987. This familial link between the two popular shows provides a unique behind-the-scenes context for viewers. We weren't trying to rough you up. The idea was to spook whoever you were working with. Matlock, the skilled defense attorney in the 1986 TV series, had a notable past as a high school baseball player. He once hit a game-changing home run in the ninth inning. Interestingly, his personal life mirrored his character on The Andy Griffith Show, as he was also a widower. One episode of Matlock even paid homage to the Andy Griffith show by recreating a famous knife scene from the fifth season episode titled Barney's Uniform. This scene featured Don Knotts, who was a recurring character on the Andy Griffith show. These connections added a layer of nostalgia for viewers who had followed Andy Griffith's career from the beginning. Proceed, Mr. Matlock. The first... In the Matlock episode titled The Blues Singer, audiences were treated to an unexpected musical performance during the credits. Andy Griffith, along with Joe Seneca, and blues singer Brownie McGee, performed a duet of the song The Midnight Special. Throughout the series, only a few main and recurring characters were set up for murder and chose to represent themselves. These characters include Les, Conrad, Cliff, Julie, and of course, Matlock himself. Interestingly, two characters named Charlene and Leanne were portrayed as sisters, but their connection was never mentioned or acknowledged during the show's run. This inconsistency may have gone unnoticed by some viewers, but it is a curious detail that stands out upon closer examination. Wilson called me because Diane Becker, my anchor woman at the time, had called him. Now it seemed Nancy Stafford, who played a key role in Matlock, had to miss several episodes in 1988 due to a busy schedule. She and her co-star, Clarence Gilliard Jr., had a good working relationship, but they haven't kept in touch for years. Gilliard has since moved to Nevada, where he works as a college professor and theater director. Matlock also has a goddaughter named Laura Miller. Despite the show's popularity and the impact it had on its audience, the characters and their lives remain fictional and do not exist outside of the series. The actors have moved on to other projects and endeavors, leaving the world of Matlock behind. Mr. Coyle, how long did you work at the warehouse before Mr. Landers was killed? Four days. And how did you... In the popular 1986 TV series Matlock, many of Andy Griffith's friends made appearances, including Mitchell Ryan, Dick Van Dyke, R.G. Armstrong, Gene Spiegel Howard, Roddy McDowell, William Schaller, Claude Akin, and Don Nuts. After six seasons, the show's ratings declined, leading NBC Entertainment President Warren Littlefield to consider canceling series aimed at older audiences. Both Matlock and In the Heat of the Night were ultimately dropped, but Griffith and the producers negotiated with ABC to continue the show, proposing a move to North Carolina to reduce production costs. Matlock ran for three more seasons before being canceled in 1995. Viacom, which produced Matlock, also held the rights to the Andy Griffith show when Matlock premiered. Not at all. Actually, it's quite fun. Pretty smart, aren't you? Yes, I am. The legal drama series Matlock, which first aired in 1986, served as a career launch pad for several actors. Nancy Stafford, Clarence Gilliard Jr., and Daniel Roebuck all gained recognition for their roles in the show. Gilliard and Roebuck, who played private investigators, later appeared in movies with Paul Gleason, who was an LAPD officer in those films. Julie March, played by Stafford, was known for her cute, perky, and sweet demeanor, but Ben Matlock saw her as a formidable and ruthless prosecutor in the DA's office. Despite her adorable appearance, she was a force to be reckoned with in the courtroom. Really? That's his job. Once you get to know him, In the 1986 TV series Matlock, Daniel Roebuck had a journey before being cast as Cliff Lewis in season 7, having played three different roles earlier. The show also featured musicians performing their music, similar to Miami Vice. Notably, Bill Mummy, known for his roles in Night Gallery and Lost in Space, appeared in one episode as Ben Matlock's nephew.
Andy Griffith, known for his role in The Andy Griffith Show, had a consistent preference for Ford automobiles in his subsequent series, Matlock. Griffith's presence was constant throughout Matlock's 195 episode run, making him the only actor to appear in all of them. The concept of Matlock came to fruition after Brandon Tartikoff saw Griffith's performance in Fatal Vision. Impressed, he suggested Griffith for the lead role to Dean Hargrove and Fred Silverman, marking Griffith's return to television after an 18-year hiatus. I think a full understanding of the circumstances is important for the jury. I don't think it... Andy Griffith, the only actor to appear in every episode of Matlock, had an impressive commitment to the show. For the first six years, while filming in Los Angeles, he commuted every weekend from his coastal home in North Carolina. This dedication is even more noteworthy considering the character he played, Ben Matlock. Matlock, a criminal defense attorney, has a unique approach to his cases. Rather than immediately presenting quantifiable evidence, he often speculates on the circumstances. This speculative method can lead to prosecutors challenging Matlock's arguments due to a lack of relevancy. Despite these challenges, Matlock's unconventional style often leads to successful case outcomes. You were so very fond of Father Fitzgerald. Andy Griffith, best known for his role as Andy Taylor in The Andy Griffith Show and as the title character in Matlock, expressed his fondness for the latter during his 1987 People's Choice Award acceptance speech. Griffith's character, Ben Matlock, was known for his irritation towards certain individuals, which he would often express by calling them jackass. This term was frequently directed towards Billy, played by Cliff's father, who had a tendency to get on Ben's nerves. Call a security guy. Did you enjoy watching Matlock, a popular 1986 TV series? We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this classic show. How did it impact you personally or influence your perspective on cinema? By sharing your stories, you can help create a vibrant community of cinema enthusiasts. Whether you were touched by the show's compelling characters, memorable plotline, or timeless themes, we want to hear from you. If you found value in this exploration of Matlock, please consider engaging with us by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more cinematic journeys. Your support helps us continue to create content that resonates with viewers like you. Together, let's celebrate the enduring power of cinema and the impact it has on our lives. We can't wait to hear from you.